In 10.2, we learned about how to graph polar functions. And you maybe have done this before. Um, but in this section now, we're going to look at some of those uh, interesting graphs and find the areas of uh, certain regions or entire regions, depending on what the problem is asking. Sometimes you're going to be allowed to use your calculator to look at the graph and then figure out the area from there. There's certain things that you can pull out from looking at the graph. Other times you're going to have to do the graph and then find uh, those important points or intersections to be able to make the determination uh, in terms of how to find the area of that particular graph. Uh, first thing, uh, this formula is the formula for polar area. Uh, um, this is on page 242 in your book. If you want a, a more in-depth explanation of where this thing comes from, um, I posted a video from Khan Academy where he derives that formula. It's kind of interesting. If you get a chance, maybe watch it. Um, but for all intents and purposes, um, you don't really need to know where it comes from in order to do these problems. But I know some of you don't just take stuff at face value, so it might be worth watching that video. Not now. You can go to that later. But this is the polar area formula. So you take one-half times the integral from alpha to beta, whatever those particular, they're going to be angles, okay, since we're uh, in integrating with respect to theta, and then the radius squared. And so we'll just jump into some of these problems and uh, kind of talk about different ways to think about. Them. So in this first one, uh, we're this is example one again, two, page 242, you're going to find the area of one petal of the curve. So the curve is um, r equals 3 cosine 3 theta. And so what uh, I would do is treat this problem because, again, some of your problems are going to be with a calculator, some of them without. We're going to do this one without. And so what we have to do is come up with all the different important points like we did in 10.2, uh, draw a graph of it, and then we're going to find the area of one of those petals. So if you'd like... Um, you can go ahead and pause the video here, graph your, um, graph your graph, keeping in mind, um, you don't have to graph the entire thing since we're only looking for one petal of this graph. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and, and go, go for that. And then I'll come back and show you how I did it. We know that this particular curve is going to have three petals. Um, because this number is odd, and that tells us the number of petals that will give us. All right, and so to go through this, I want to find some of the key areas here. And so uh, I want to figure out where, for example, um, where this equals zero, because cosine of zero is one, and so then my radius would be three, at all those areas or all those particular angles. So what I know here is that whenever three theta is here, that cosine is one. So that's gonna happen at zero, it's gonna happen at two pi, it's gonna happen at four pi. And so if I just figure out what theta has to equal at those three angles, I should have endpoints of each of the petals. And so in order to solve for theta, I just divide everything by three. And so I get zero, two pi over three, four pi over three. And so notice here, those are the end points of each of my petals. Now, as I go through and work on the rest of this problem, I'm not gonna graph the whole thing. Since I only need the area of one petal, I'm gonna focus on this particular petal. And the trick is going, okay, if I, if I start here at zero and I start rotating, I want to know what's going to happen to the curve. Well, one of the ways to figure out that is to go, all right, when will this whole thing equal zero? If I'm out here right now and I start rotating, when does it get back to here? And of course, the cosine is zero when the angle is pi over two. So my next move is to set three theta equal to pi over two because that tells me 
that this radius will collapse back to zero. There'll be, there'll be no radius anymore. It'll equal zero. So if three theta equals pi over two, that means theta will have to equal pi over six, just basically dividing both sides by three. So what that's telling me is that at pi over six, the radius falls back to zero. So right here, this, this, since this is the maximum radius it can be, it's gonna shrink all the way till pi over six when it's zero again. And since that gives me, that gives me an idea what that shape of the pedal is gonna kind of look like. And, and so it looks like this, all right? So the radius as we're moving from zero to pi over six is shrinking, 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 shrinking until eventually it's nothing. And so what I've accomplished here is I've gotten the shape of one half of one petal. And so if I find the area under here and multiply it by two, I will have the area of the entire petal. So that's what my... Um, strategy is going to be for this particular problem all right and if you want to um, think about it that way if you want to draw the other part of this pedal you can but essentially what i'm going to do is first i'm just going to set up the area of this particular pedal uh half of a pedal and then we're going to take that answer and multiply it by two and that will give me the area of the entire pedal so now we go to our formula one of the things that's important is in this formula, I start off, at, in this particular problem, I start off at angle zero, and I work my way until I get to pi over six. So those are my limits of integration. Zero to pi over six, I have to have the one half. My radius in this case is the formula. And so that's what my integral is gonna look like. I've got one half from zero to pi over six, of my radius squared, don't forget the squared, that's that's a big one, you can you can forget that one, it's easy to, to miss that one, but be sure to get the squared in there. And then, again, this is just the area of this part from the x-axis to the, the, the top of the curve, the area underneath the curve in the x-axis. Well, I still need the second part of it, okay? And so I'm gonna multiply it by two, and that will give me the entire pedal because this area and this area will always be the same. So then from there, it's just a matter of taking that. We're not integrating this um, by hand. From this point, you're just gonna, and of course the two and the one half cancel out. So it's essentially a matter of going to your graphing calculator, punching this in and seeing what you get for the integral. And so go ahead and do that if you haven't done that yet. And we end up getting 2.356 square units, we're talking about area. We don't know what the unit of measurement is. I'm a big fan of making sure that we have some type of units when we are finding area or volume, we'll be finding volume later on this year. Um, so that's what we're doing for, for a problem like this. Now there's lots more going on in this section, so we'll keep going with the next example. We're gonna look at three of the four examples that are in the book. This next one uh, is asked just for the points of intersection. And what I can tell you is where we're going with this is at some point, the next example, we're gonna have two different polar curves and we're gonna find the area either in between them or outside of them, the intersection, the union, those kinds of things. And so those points of intersection end up being limits of integration that we use to set up our formula. And so that's where this is sort of starting off to do that, but they didn't ask us to find the area. Now, uh, again, this could be a calculator problem or it could be a non-calculator problem. Uh, I'm gonna go through and graph it uh, as it was uh, a non-calculator problem, and then we're gonna figure out where they intersect. The other thing that you will find out is that um, Sometimes there are points of intersection that as we go to calculate the area, we won't use. And the only way to really see them is to look at the graph. And we'll talk about that as we move through here. Well, the nice thing about this problem is 
whenever you have just r equals some number, they're telling you what the radius is, which means it's a circle. So that's an easy one to graph. Um, now this one uh, is a little trickier. That is one of those Limanson. <laughs> I'll never be able to say that one right. Okay. And um, so we just have to graph that. And again, I'm looking for important points. When cosine equals zero, when cosine equals one, when cosine equals negative one, those kinds of things in order to get a feel for it. It's not going to give me quite everything, um, but it is going to give me an idea of the shape that we're forming. And in this particular problem, we are going to run into one area where it's a little trickier to come up with uh, the value for R. And we're going to have not the nicest angle to use. I mean, if we can stick with, you know, uh, pi over 2s, pi's, pi over 4s, pi over 3s, pi over 6s, that's great. But that's, it's not always, we're not always going to be able to do that. So anyway, um, so right off the bat, I'm going to start with when... Um, Cosine is zero, that means uh, this is one, so this is one minus two, which is negative one. And so I'm at negative one, zero, so I've got a point over here, so well, there's one point of intersection. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then I'm gonna start onto my pi over two and three pi over two, because that means this is zero, Right, because the cosine is zero at pi over two and three pi over two, so then I just get a one, and so that's where those other points come in. And uh, we just have to see if there's any other points of intersection, because there's three of them right there. Um, and once we draw the rest of the graph, we'll, we'll get a look at that. So then I'm gonna start with when cosine equals pi, and, or when theta equals pi, excuse me, and when theta equals pi, this equals negative one, so all of this equals three, so we get a point out here. So we're starting to kind of see a shape. It's gonna kind of be a blob over here. There might be a, a internal rotation there, uh, but we'll see. Uh, my next move is to go at pi over three, and at pi over three, cosine is one half. So this is one half, negative two times one half is negative one, so that's where r equals zero, and so that's where I kind of come back at pi over three, it comes back to to, um, to zero. Uh, so I'm, I, I feel like it, it's getting a shape like this maybe, but it's probably gonna come over here too, so I'm gonna have to keep working at that a little bit. Um, so my next move is to use versions of pi over three, uh, uh, reference angles really. Uh, two pi over three over here is going to still, it's just going to give me negatives, right? And so instead of being one half, it's going to be negative one half. Four pi over three is going to also give me negative one half, which then makes these two. And again, if this is negative one half, that makes this positive one, negative two times negative one half. And so one plus one is two. And so I've got a couple more. All right, so now that blob shapey thing that I was talking about is starting to take shape a little bit. And then my, my issue that I have with these limonsons are that oftentimes they kind of, they don't just start here and end here. They, they'll move over to this side a little bit. And so here we're kind of running out of, of um, points. I guess I could use pi over four, um, but then I'm still looking at square roots instead of anything really nice and it's not necessarily better or worse than what I'm about to do. Um, I, I looked at five pi over 12, and I, I obviously I used the calculator for this, and then of course, um, 19 pi over 12. Those have the same cosines because we're over here. And so, like I said, it kind of pops out a little bit there, and then I get an idea of what my sketch is gonna be. Uh, and so it's gonna look something like this. Now, I wish I could say with certainty whether or not when you get to the AP test that they'll say no calculator, yes calculator, but I would really hope they would let you use a calculator for something like this because this is a tricky problem. Um, but the points of intersection, we, we actually found out in our first two moves, there weren't any others. There was just here, here, and here. And so... Um, 
what's interesting is that of what I'm about to show you um, doesn't always get it. All right, so this is why the graph is important. Because in theory, if we just set these two things equal to each other, shouldn't that tell us all our point of intersection? And when we go to do that, I'll, I'll go back over here. Like for example, they might ask for just the area inside here. They might ask for the area in between the limonson and the circle. You know, uh, I don't know, uh, depending on the problem. We're gonna look at a problem like that here in a minute. So knowing those particular points of intersection help us because we will then use those to find our limits of integration. All right, uh, last, okay, I set well, one minus two cosine theta equal to one and I solve this and I only get two angles, all right, because the cosine of zero is pi over two and three pi over two. So this is where we, where we have to really use that graph and make sure that that's that's going to be helpful to us because, um, of course, this is also asking for the points of intersection. Not It didn't ask for the angle, it asked for the point. So I'm going to have to take these and plug them in. Well, the, the thing that's nice, however, is r is a constant that always equals 1. So in theory, I should be plugging these in and confirming that the radius is going to be 1. Well, we already did that, right? We did that over here when we used pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 in our table and confirmed that it uh, so those are my points of intersection. The trick is I also have this other one. Okay, we came up with it, negative one zero. Alternatively, you could say one pi, and that came from the graph. So sometimes, actually most of the time, especially in your homework, for problems like this and for problems finding the area, you're going to also be asked to graph. Sometimes you're going to be allowed to graph with the calculator. Sometimes you're going to have to graph by hand. Again, I go back to the idea of, I'm not sure how they will ask it on the AP exam. You should know how to do it both ways. Um, and so that's all we needed to do here. If we were going to be finding some particular area that we're gonna go through, this is example three. Now we're gonna find the area between two curves, okay? Um, again, they may let you use a calculator. They may not. This one I'm going, to sh I'm going to show you on the calculator. We're going to treat this like a calculator problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of these into my calculator. we got to make sure we're in polar mode. We're going to use zoom fit and uh, go ahead and graph that and put one of these in R1, one of them in R2, and, t and then see what your graph ends up looking like. So maybe pause it while, uh, while you do that. Here's what mine look like. I'm at home. I don't have my plus CE at home. So you just get black and white. Um, so we have this ovally looking thing. Okay, that's this R equals negative cosine theta. Okay, then we have our lemon zone, two minus two cosine theta. All right. Now, when it says the area of the region common, we're talking about the intersection where they both have the same area. And this is where this problem gets tricky. One, it's really helpful if you have a color graph so you can see exactly which one is which. But we're talking about where the area of this and the area of this intersect, which to me looks like this right here, okay? I have an area for the lemon zone, I have an area for this oval, and this is the area that I'm trying to calculate. And so here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna break it up into pieces because we have to. In reality, this portion of the area belongs to this oval. This portion of the area belongs to the lemon zone. So, Here's the way I'm gonna approach this, all right? So right here, I have this point of intersection between the two graphs. So this gives you the idea of why we need the points of intersection because those are gonna help determine our limits of integration. So right here to this point, I'm taking the area under the curve of this curve, all right? Because that's the oval. And from this point beyond, I'm taking the area under the curve of this curve. So here, 
Now, of course, I need this area too. And so I'm going to take this area and just multiply it by two and I'll get that one. All right. And so that's where I'll come up with my area. Now, what I would, so, so in reality, let me, let me just backtrack a sec. We're going to have to find the area from here to here of this curve. And then we're going to have to find the area from here to here of this curve. So I'm going to have two integrals. I'm going to have an integral for this, and I'm going to add to it the integral for this. And then I'm going to multiply all that times 2 to give me my total area of the common region. All right. Pause the video. Try to set it up. See if you can do it and uh, compare to what I put up here, and let's see if, if you get the same thing. And don't be surprised if you don't. It's okay. First crack at this. All right, I'm going to focus on this area. Uh, a couple things that we need to know that would be helpful. I need to know what this point is. I really need to know what angle we're talking about here when this intersection occurs, when I switch from one curve to the other. Now, I should have two points of intersection, this one and this one. And... Um, Here's how we're going to figure that out. Just kind of like what we did on the last problem. We're going to set these two things equal to each other. And we're going to figure out what those angles are. So I've got it done up here. Negative cosine theta equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. I add 2 cosine theta to the other side. So that's where my negative 4 cosine theta comes from. That still just equals 2. Divide both sides by negative 4, so that gives me my negative 1 half, right? So cosine equals negative 1 half. Um, we talked about that on the last problem. So that's going to happen at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Those are the angles at those points of intersection. Why I don't need the entire point is because when I integrate, I just need the angles, all right? So... At one point here, there's my this this angle is two two pi over three. This angle is four pi over three. And so now maybe try writing the 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 each of the integrals because we couldn't really do that until we had that. Now here's the other trick. This angle for this red region is where uh, the angle ends, right? So it started here, and then the uh, so it started here where the radius is zero, and then it grew to the point where it became two pi over three. So we have to figure out what this angle is. Is it zero? Is it pi over two? Well, let's look at the this particular function. Obviously, the radius is zero here. So when is the radius zero for this function? Well, when the cosine equals zero and the cosine equals zero at pi over two. So my starting limit of integration is pi over two because that's when this equals zero. Okay, if we said zero, then the radius is not, if the angle was zero, the radius is not zero. The radius is negative six. So for my first one, and again, it's always two times because I'm going to have this one and this one. I start off here at pi over 2. My radius grows until I get to 2 pi over 3. I take my radius, plug it in, square it. All right, which the thing that's nice is now I know that my lower limit for this integral is going to still be pi over, or sorry, 2 pi over 3. I, I end here for this one, and I start there for this one. Well, when does this come back down to the x-axis? Well, I look here, and I figure out when will this be 4, right? Because here's where r is 4. Well, in order for r to be 4, this has to turn into a negative 1 because I need this to be 2 plus 2, not 2 minus 2. Well, when is the cosine equal to negative 1? At pi. 
So I know that my limits of integration for this green region are 2 pi over 3 to pi. Okay. So let's let that sink in a little bit. 2 pi over 3 is this angle here. And it goes all the way over till this equals 4. This equals 4 when theta equals negative, or when the cosine equals negative 1. Well, the cosine equals negative 1 at pi. Now, you might be able to just go, all right, well, it, I mean, it's curving around. It lands here on the uh, negative x-axis. Isn't it just pi? And the answer is yes, it is. Another way to think about it. Anyway, at this point, it's a matter of plugging this properly into your calculator. Plugging this properly into your calculator. You could do it all at once. And have to, and have this part plus this part. Obviously, you don't need the the two times one half because that's one in both cases. So carefully enter that in, uh, see what you get, and hopefully it matches what I have. Fifteen point seven zero eight square units. I think this is rounded. So if you truncated and went fifteen point seven zero seven on the AP exam, that would also be accepted. But we got to see all this, and we got to see this point of intersection. I guarantee you those would be uh, points given per problem, okay? So you, you've got, you've only got like five homework problems, six homework problems. These take a long time to do. Um, and so you've got, you're going to have some homework over the weekend, plus we have the long weekend. Uh, on Tuesday, when we get back, we're going to spend another day on this, uh, just practicing and giving you a chance to ask me questions. I know it's hard when I'm not there. Uh, the other thing that we have coming up after that is a quiz. So your day two assignment that we're going to do on Tuesday will have some practice review type problems from 10.1, 10.2 to help you kind of get ready for your quiz on Thursday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.